Hi. Happy Wednesday. How are you? It's a beautiful day here. I hope you're enjoying yours. So the topic of today is how often should you evaluate your career? And that's both in terms of your goals and your performance toward those goals. So as you know, I'm a coach, um, which is specific to careers and leadership development, performance. And um, I'm curious when the last time you evaluated your goals are. So if you join me live or if you watch the recording, comment below and let me know when the last time you really thought about what you want next in your career, what you want ultimately in your career, and how you think you're doing against those goals and what you can do. So um, if you're here and you're a client, then you know what coaching is about. Um, well, I mean, there, there have been clients who just wanted me to write their resume, um, which is great. I like helping people in that way. But I feel like I can make a very large impact to not just where somebody winds up one time, but how they perceive themselves in their whole career. And that ultimately improves the trajectory from that point forward. That's, that's what I really get jazzed about. So the most su successful people, the people that you probably look up to, I'm sorry, my allergies are causing this thing in my throat. Hang on a second. <clears throat> Some of you know I was sick all spring. I'm not that bad anymore, but sometimes I just opened the windows because it was finally cool and dry. But uh, it's wreaking some havoc here. Sorry about that. So the most successful people will evaluate and measure themselves against their goals quarterly, just like a company does. Go figure. Um, it doesn't have to be in depth every quarter, right? But um, I would say even beyond a quarterly goal, there would be a 30, 60, 90 quarterly year goal, three-year goal, five-year goal. I don't, I don't know too much about extending past a five-year goal. I think there you could have an idea of what you ultimately want to be able to say about your time in your career, what you want people to say at your retirement party. That's a fun exercise. You know, imagine you're at your retirement party and people are – uh, giving you accolades for all the things that you achieved and showing you great appreciation. That's actually something you can do right before an interview because it, uh, it'll, do, it'll have, activate parts of your brain associated with your self-image and it can give you a lot more confidence and improve your connection with your interviewer because you're going to be coming from a contribution value-based place, what you, how you want to be uh, appreciated. So, um, but think about you're at your retirement party, fast forward, what do you want the people who managed you to say? What do you want the people that you managed to say? If your aspirations include management, they don't have to. Um, what do you want people to have? You know, if they're talking about like, oh, I had this pain, you know, and, and only, only you solved it. So just think about those things. And um, those are some good ways to determine what your 30, 60, 90, one-year goal, three-year goal, five-year goal is. Because it's, you know, it's... Maybe you think that it's just based purely on how a company measures your performance. And that's input that you should incorporate into developing your goals. Because if you like your company, you want to stay with your company, and you want to grow as far as you can with your company, then you want to understand how your company measures success, right? And that can be included in your goals. But ultimately, when I'm a career coach, I'm advocating for you and what you want. And um, sometimes somebody from the outside can see better if what you want ultimately and your highest good is going to be achieved with one company or if maybe there are other opportunities. We are, I can speak at least for myself, but career coaches in general are experts in the job market. Um, so, you know, we have a wider, broader view of the opportunity that's available out there somewhere if you're better served by changing companies. That is something a consultant would tell you. So coaches really ask you the good questions to help you understand yourself better, understand your goals better, understand the things that you need to do in order to get there, and they ask a lot of questions. Consultants give advice, so I would call myself a coach and consultant, and I'm a certified career transition consultant, so I give advice. I'm certified to give advice. 
Um, but I also love to ask great questions and have people come to realizations on their own because the realizations that you come to on your own are often the ones that are more in tune, more resonant with what you really want with your highest self, and they're also more powerful. They're going to be the ones that motivate you to do whatever it needs to be done to achieve your goals. So let's think about 30-day goals, right? Um, if you're just starting a job, the 30-day goal is really just to understand better what your role is there and who the people are that are impacted by what you do, and, to, and that goes downward and upward. So understanding, right? Um, and if you're not, if you're maybe in a job but haven't done that yet, because a lot of people get in a job, they see their roles and responsibilities, they get in there, they fulfill those roles and responsibilities, and they don't necessarily stop to think, what does this role actually do for the company? You know, how does what I do impact everybody around me from the people um, that are working underneath me or in lateral to me or above me, as well as customers or clients? Um, vendors, you know, how is everybody impacted by what I do? And if I do my job well, how can I positively impact other people? So come into that understanding. If you're already at that understanding, then you are in a much better place to develop goals for your particular company, your particular role. And you can include those. How many goals should you have, right? How, how many goals is realistic to come up with? So every goal is going to require an act in, an action or activities that have varying timelines and um, and this is where a coach can kind of help you get yourself organized around the system that will help you achieve those goals and kind of say what's well, really realistic for how long it will take for you to achieve this goal and um, and to incorporate the company what, what the input the company and your role has in your goals as well as to kind of say great but you ultimately also want to be here and every individual, in my professional opinion, would be better served if when they took a look at you know, what they wanted to do, how they wanted to measure their own performance outside of the way a company um, measures and evaluates their performance, to think about what you want to be appreciated for, okay? Because what you're appreciated for by your boss isn't necessarily what leverages your talents and skills. But what will ultimately fulfill you is being able to have those skills and talents fully leveraged. So even if your job doesn't require you to use these talents and skills, to think about how you can contribute those talents and skills to contribute. Now, are you aware? Are you fully aware of your talents and skills? That is where a coach comes in. A coach comes in to help you, and I, what I say is unveil your brilliance. So a coach helps you understand the things that you bring to the table that aren't just basic qualifications for a job, but what you bring to the table that is distinctly and uniquely you. The things that your life experience, your life perspective, the way you were raised, the people who influenced you growing up, the people who influenced you through your formative years and adult years, you know, how that all has enabled you to approach something in a way that other people wouldn't where it turns out as an outcome that is different or better for a particular type of company, so not for everybody. Not everybody's going to appreciate the way you do things, but ultimately you're gonna be most fulfilled and happy in a place that does appreciate the way that you do things, where you're not stifled and you can feel like yourself and you can fully leverage your talents and skills. So wherever you are right now, those are things that you have to become self-aware of first. So if you're not there yet, then working with a coach like me is the logical next step, okay? Um, if you're at your company and you, you have that self-awareness, then, um, again, be aware of how your job impacts everybody around you and think about the contribution that you ultimately want to make, what you want people to say about you. That's ultimately your brand. Your brand is what you want other people to say about you. How, what is the impression that you want them to get? How do you want to leave these people and the experience that they have with you? So I think brand gets <laughs> – there's a lot of negative connotations about branding – it seems like spin, you know, it seems like, um, it can anyway, but it, you know, it can seem like you're just putting pretty paper around an ugly package. <laughs> um, and, and that does happen in companies and, and for people, you know, there are some people who get the opportunities that just put, had a pretty package and they're not necessarily the quality content that was needed for the job. So, um, what I'd like to see is more people who have the quality content, which has been every single client I've ever had never had a client that wasn't quality content, package themselves up so that people can understand the quality that's inside easily. 
easily make a decision. You're the package that we want and bring you in. So 30, 60, 90 day plan of how you're going to make sure that you're leaving that impression. Incorporating your boss into the activity here. Now, companies rarely um, do evaluations on a schedule that's as a best practice. So while they should, and some companies do a great job of onboarding somebody and making sure that they're meeting with their manager every 30, 60, 90 days, and then, then every quarter after that, besides an annual full comprehensive review of someone's career, um, that has to be on you. You know, ultimately, the company the companies are not responsible for your personal growth. That might there might have been a time when you could kind of sit back and relax and and have the company recognize your hard work and you'd get promoted as a result and you'd get success as a result. And if that day ever really was true for everybody, it just wasn't true for everybody. But um, it's no longer it's no longer the case. Hi, whoever's there, you can leave me a comment. The case is now that employers are at will and uh, you know loyalty isn't necessarily something that companies have been earning and you job security isn't something that companies offer you so that has to be something that you take accountability you create for yourself and you do that by making sure that you understand where you ultimately want to be breaking that down into milestones 30 60 90 day quarterly annually and then engaging your boss in the process and if your boss isn't going to be engaged in the process then making a decision that another boss will be more engaged in the process, right? <laughs> um, and then devising a plan to get a new boss, not just like jumping ship, unless it's really bad. So um, you, can also, you can engage your boss in the process simply by saying, hey, I outlined these goals for myself. Do you agree that I've achieved these goals over the last 30 days? Or you know, can, you, can we check back in in 30 days, 60, 90 days? And again, they may or may not be things that he's evaluating your performance on. But come time, this, this is a way that if you do like your company and there are other opportunities within your company to grow or, you know, to grow laterally or vertically, then this is what gets you noticed by a company to move in that direction. Uh, off, I've seen a lot of people become indispensable to their boss by performing really well against the, the performance criteria of the company and what happens is they become so indispensable that they are never recommended for any changes. <laughs> so um, you can be highly successful and awesome at your job, but it doesn't necessarily equate into career growth unless you marry these two processes of company performance, role performance versus your own career evaluation performance. So do we offer help with that? Of course we do. Of course, you can have a meeting with me, and if you're working and you just want to really optimize the growth that you're going to have in your career as it stands right now and as it could stand in the future, then we can do a, um, a you can have your first initial consultation. We can devise a 30, 60, 90 day plan, and then we can also schedule quarterly evaluations. And these aren't necessarily long phone calls. It's kind of like, okay, great, let's take a look at the performance that you did. And by the way, the output of these meetings can be updates for your resume. I know that, you know, my brother's a mechanic and he's always like, you should do this to your car. You should do this to your car. This needs to be done every so often. And, you know, that along with, you know, everybody else who has these recommendations, things you got to do for your business, the bookkeeping has should be done, blah, blah, blah. You know, like everybody has these things that other people expect, you know, it would be great if you, you know, <laughs> And it's in your best interest to, um, ultimately, I mean, how can we all keep up with the demand of all of these things that we're supposed to do? Very hard. Adulting can be challenging. But in terms of updating your resume, you know, this is a really easy way to not just keep your resume updated in the case that an opportunity does come, come across and then you're poised to act promptly and beat the competition. But it's also a way that you can make sure that, you know, your trajectory in your career goes like this instead of flatlining. So get in touch with me. You can book me through this page. You can email me at karen at epiccareering.com. Give me a call at 610-888-6939. And I look forward to helping you do this with your career. Some people have gone like that. <laughs> have a great week join me next week like my page share this with anybody you think 
um, would be helped by it.